As the Buddha once said, there are four types of individuals to be found in the world. Those born into darkness and going into darkness. Those born into light but going into darkness. Those born into darkness going into light and those born into light going into light. As we practice, we try to be the type of people who are going into the light. In other words, we practice the five precepts, practice the Dharma. That leads to a bright future. But we have to live in a world where there are people who are determined to go into darkness. Even if you, even if you point out the light to them, they don't want it. And they can be very destructive. And as we read about their activities, it's very easy to get anxious. At what point will their darkness come in and cut off our pursuit of the light? But you have to remember this has always been the way of the world. Human nature has always been like this. We live in a mixed world. As the Buddha also said, we need mixed karma in order to become humans. If you want to find a place where people have nothing but good karma, you have to go way up into the higher heavens. So we're living in a mixed bag. But we try to develop our perfections in an imperfect world. We can't let other people's darkness dissuade us from sticking with the path to the light. So we have to figure out a way not to get discouraged, not to get anxious, in a way that eats away at our energy as we practice. And one of the first steps is to convert your anxiety into sangwega, realizing that this is nothing new. This is the way the universe has always been. You look at the time of the Buddha, an enlightened age, but still the kings were going into battle over stupid things. And from that time on up, you read about people born into good conditions, and they destroy them. It's happened again and again and again. But in the midst of that, people have been practicing the Dharma and benefiting from their practice. So when you've thought about the universality of the destructive nature of human beings and developed a good sense of Sangwega, remember the cure for Sangwega is Masada, confidence that the goodness you do is not lost, simply that the opportunities to do good may get cut short, but you have to determine you're going to keep on. Continue to pursue the perfections. Continue to pursue your, your noble treasures. Those are your valuables. Those are the things you should hold on to. Because the reason we're afraid of other people, what they might do, or what might happen in society, is because we're looking for our treasures and things that can be affected by other people's actions. But if we build treasures into the mind, nobody else can take them away. We're the only ones who can destroy them. We have no good reason to do that. We may get discouraged that we don't have as much time to do this as we'd like. But remember, the Buddha said one day practicing the Dharma is worth more than a hundred years lived without practicing the Dharma. So you've got today. Make it an auspicious day. 
which is not a matter of the stars or of any preordained fate. What makes the day auspicious is that you do your duty, as the Buddha said. Of course, that refers to the duties of the Four Noble Truths. Those are things you can do every day. Which means you can do them today. Some people say, well, I can do them any day, well, and then you put it off. That's not the right attitude. The proper attitude is, today is the day, because who knows about tomorrow? So you can make each day auspicious. You work on developing the noble treasures, confidence in the Buddha's awakening, conviction in the Buddha's awakening. And what he discovered about human action does give us hope that it is possible through what you do and say and think, if you do with knowledge, to put it into suffering. And the path there is a good path. It's a path that leads to light. And based on that, you have a sense of shame, a healthy sense of shame, which is the opposite of shamelessness. You think about all the noble ones who have gone before us. They worked hard not only to practice the Dharma, but also to set a good example. And so if you fritter away your time, think of it as something you'd be embarrassed about. Remember that question the Buddha has you ask, days and nights fly past, fly past, what am I becoming right now? Well, suppose he showed up in front of you and asked you, today is flying past, what are you doing right now? You want to give him an answer that you're not ashamed to give. That kind of shame is a healthy sense of shame, because it gets you to do what's right, gets you to do what's skillful. You read those stories about people meditating and getting discouraged and thinking they're going to give up, and the Buddha appears right in front of them. On the one hand, they probably felt very embarrassed, but on the other hand, they thought about how kindly his action was. He went to all that trouble to search them out. So when you think about shame as being the desire to look good in the eyes of those you respect, remember that their standards are set out of compassion for you. So it's shame in a healthy relationship. It's paired with compunction. Once you know that certain actions are going to lead to trouble down the line, you don't tell yourself, well, this little case won't matter. It's just once. Once turns into twice and turns into three times, and then it stops adding and starts multiplying. So each time you feel tempted to do something you know is going to lead to bad consequences, you've got to fight it. You can't be apathetic, because again, who knows how many more days you have to practice the Dharma. You do have today, so make it an exemplary day. Now, based on shame and compunction, you practice virtue, you develop the virtue of the mind. In other words, you have principles in how you're going to behave, how you're going to find your happiness. You're going to find it in a way that doesn't create harm for others. This is probably one of the most dismaying things about the human world is so many people look for their happiness and they're very callous about the effect of their search for happiness on other people. They write other people off. They don't matter. But you take it as a point of honor that that's not how you're going to behave. You're going to be responsible in your search for happiness. 
those four qualities, conviction, shame, compunction, and virtue, form a set. Then the other three treasures are learning, in other words, having a fund of knowledge about the Dharma. In the old days they would memorize it. You probably notice as you go through the day, sometimes bits and snatches of the chants go through your head. It's good to have those things floating around inside the head, because you never know. They might come in just when you need them. That's one of the reasons why we have the chants not only in Pali but also in English. But if you know the Pali, it's good, it's good to have that too. Because that acts as a little reminder. This is what the Dharma would, would say. It's good to have those in, in your mind, especially as you get sick and your physical strength begins to wane. This fund of knowledge, this fund of dharma that you have, will be something you can rely on to give you the right perspective. Another treasure is generosity, the ability to give up things you know are going to get in the way of a higher happiness. That ability to trade up, realizing that to gain something of great value, there are a lot of things of lesser value you're going to have to give up. So rather than trying to gather everything together that you like, you have to realize. It's like, as John Lee said, it's like being told that you're going to be forced to move to another country. You can't take everything with you, so you take the things that are really necessary. You focus on those. And one of the things that's necessary is this attitude of generosity. It translates not only into willingness to give up things, but also willingness to give up unskillful mind states. You don't want anything that's going to weigh you down. And then finally, discernment of all the treasures. This is the most valuable. This is what teaches you how to use the other ones. The Buddha's discernment is strategic. It's based on finding long-term happiness. Remember, it begins with that question about when I do it, will lead to my long-term welfare and happiness. Realization With the realization there is such a thing as long-term happiness, and it's better than short-term, and it's going to depend on your actions. That's the principle that underlies everything else, because that's what you hold on to. That's why we develop good qualities in the mind, because they lead to long-term happiness. This is why we're willing to give up things that would get in the way of developing good qualities, because otherwise you're cutting short your long possibility your potential for long-term happiness. So with the conviction that there is such a thing, and the discernment of how to act it, how to bring it about. <clears throat> These are the things that should give you a sense of confidence, and even though Things look pretty desperate. Things look pretty dark. Still, this has been the recurring theme of the human realm. It's nothing new that the Dharma hasn't encountered before. I don't know how many people say, well, now that we have this crisis and that crisis, we have to forget about the practice of the traditional practice of the Dharma and do something new instead. But we've had crises all along. Those four mountains have been moving in again and again and again. 
And the basic principle is always the same. What are you going to do? Right conduct, dharma conduct, meritorious actions, skillful actions, developing the good qualities of the mind. Because when the mountains crush everything else you might have, they can't crush these things. These things are still intact. So invest your time, invest your sense of what's important in things that will remain intact, even as mountains come moving in. And that way you can face the inevitable without anxiety. You can face it with confidence. Because whatever time you have, you've used it well. And you're ready to continue using your time well. Whatever the situation around you.